What might the effects of a nuclear bomb exploding on the moon? It's a wild idea, but if it ever happened, here's what you might imagine. The Chinese invented gunpowder in 1044. Ever since, we've got into trouble. Fireworks are cool, nuclear warfare is not. And the moon nuking? Isn't that just plain crazy? What had happened then? Should we see the explosion even then? How does the fallout impact us? Should we survive either? The Soviet Sputnik satellite successfully orbited Earth in 1957, bringing Russia ahead in the space race. The Americans agreed not to be outdone, that they would nuke the moon. The US believed that a lunar explosion visible from Earth would showcase American firepower and improve morale at home. Would seeing something like this in the sky give you peace of mind? The most powerful nuclear bomb created has a yield of 50 megatons of TNT and the equivalent of 3,800 Hiroshima bombs. Wondering how nuking the moon will affect humanity? The short answer is, it wouldn't have. You're gonna need a bigger bomb, 10 trillion bigger TNT megatons. An explosion of this size would likely push the moon out of Earth's orbit, expose us to meteors, affect our tides, eventually kill all marine life while affecting our seasons catastrophically. So, while our bomb couldn't knock the moon off its trajectory, could our experiment have a drastic effect on its radiation levels? That would be a big problem. Among the many reasons the US canceled the 1958 attempt to nuke the moon, apart from worldwide opposition, was the fear that the nuclear fallout would destroy the military's plans to colonize the moon by 1967. Yet, our moon doesn't resemble Earth. It's not covered by an ozone layer, which means it's exposed directly to cosmic rays and solar flares. This results in high space radiation levels on the moon's surface, and too much of it can hardly make a difference from the radioactive waste from a single nuclear explosion. Interestingly, NASA is also looking for a way around the moon's radiation problem, as it hopes to create and hire a lunar base in the future there. If we detonated a nuke on the moon, the most damage we might do physically is add another crater to its surface. Which is ironic since the moon gets its craters from blocking meteorites heading for Earth. So, maybe we should stop trying to attack it and be grateful for its defenses and the seasons and the tides. Three things we'd miss if we didn't have a moon. There'd be no such thing as eclipses on Earth. There would be no eclipses without the sun, moon or Earth. The sun shines constantly on Earth, leaving a shadow in its wake for a million miles and over a million kilometers. Yet, without our moon, just a few hundred thousand miles or kilometers away, there would be no planet moving through the shadow of the Earth. There would be no lunar eclipses. There wouldn't be any solar eclipses either. No annular, partial or total eclipses. The shadow of the moon is nearly exactly the same length as the distance from the Earth moon. Without the moon, there's no shadow and no disk to prevent the light of the sun. The next largest object that can pass in between Earth after the moon is Venus. And while it's incredibly cool when that happens, that's the closest we'd get to an eclipse without the moon. Nights would be much, much darker than we're used to. If you've ever been out on a totally moonless night in the forest without any artificial light, you've probably noticed two things. First, the night sky is completely breathtaking. With your naked eye alone, you can see thousands upon thousands of stars, the Milky Way plain, and even dozens of vast, deep space objects. And second, in front of your own ears, you cannot see a damn thing. The sun is much, much lighter than the moon. The full moon is almost as bright as the daytime sun at 1 400,000th. But Venus, the next brightest night sky star, is only 1 14,000th as bright as the full moon. We have pretty decent vision at night, as long as the moon is out. But our night vision without it is, well, not very effective. As anyone who's camped without a headlamp or working flashlight can attest. It's probably fair to say that, without the moon, vision would have evolved very differently and our nights would have given us a completely different world to experience. Our axial tilts would vary tremendously over time. You've probably learned that the Earth rotates on its axis, spinning around the Sun at around 23.5 degrees relative to its orbital plane. That is correct, but have you ever stopped thinking about what keeps the Earth from changing the tilt of its rotational axis? Much as a spinning top not only conducts but also experiences more complicated movement over time, some of which you may know as nutation, an entire planet can do this too. Mars is a perfect example, currently tilted at around 24 degrees relative to the Sun. 
We know its axial tilt varies over time from about 15 degrees to about 35 degrees. But Earth is special because we have external strength to stabilize us against such behavior. Know what's responsible? The Moon, that's right! Our axis remains tilted between 23 and 26 degrees with time, even over hundreds of millions of years, thanks to our Moon. But without our Moon, there would be nothing in our rotational axis that would prevent catastrophic shifts. It's probable that sometimes, because of our axial tilt, we will be like the planet Mercury rotating in the same plane as our rotation and having almost no seasons. At other times, we might be as extreme as Uranus, rotating like a barrel on our side and having the most extreme seasons imaginable. So, the next time you take our moon for granted, think about how different life would be and how different the entire history of life on Earth would have been if we didn't have our moon. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new videos.